Hello everyone and welcome to the Anime Zillia and thank you for joining me as we start our journey through the Tower of God webtoon series. This series in where I review slash talk um, on things that are based within the webtoon series and include my thoughts on the chapters that are presented uh, in the title of the videos. I also look at things that are different than I've managed to pick up and maybe I'll compare some of the things that the webtoon series has compared to the anime counterpart. Because I think that might be some interesting takes and talk as to why I think one part did it better than, say, the other. And in this video, there is definitely one of those things that does pique my interest quite a lot. But first things first, I do need to talk about the art style. Personally speaking, I'm not the biggest fan of this early art style. Yes, I know it makes a big drastic change as the story goes on. So for me personally, it's not a big issue. I can deal with it. The thing is, it makes Bam, Black March, and Rachel look really weird if I'm perfectly honest with you. Held on, Yuri and the Navigator, honestly don't mind. However, this is not necessarily a bad thing. As if you've seen the anime, it can kind of help explain as to why um, and goes along with the whole theme of Rachel's character. You may know that Rachel isn't the most attractive character within the Tower of God. This is brought up by Held On in the anime series and also herself from time to time. Nothing really makes Rachel stand out. She has no sort of like defining characteristic features to her character that make you go, oh, Rachel's character is really like good looking or beautiful or stands out. And this art style pairs perfectly with that. Now, this can also add to the whole reason as to why she's unpopular and wants to become a star, a star slash main heroine, because obviously that's the phrase they use in the series. So having a character in this bad art style is actually justified because it fits with a character theme of not standing out and not being this kind of character that draws people towards her. If you've got a character that you want to draw the audience, so the readers as us, and the characters too, you give them some defining features and characteristics and um, appearance wise that makes them kind of stand out as a star. Rachel's bad art style design doesn't do that. So honestly, that pairs nicely. It is a thing that you may only know though if you've seen all the anime, but again, it does kind of help. But overall, I liked the content displayed in these first four chapters. As the new information that's not included in the anime appears throughout these chapters, as well as some change in dialogues, which do create an interesting reaction while reading. These videos, I will be containing spoilers for both the anime and the chapters that I'll be covering in these videos. Um, so if you don't want any spoilers for those, then I'm afraid these videos aren't for you. But with all that being said, and all that being cleared up, let's look in to some of the things that I found pretty interesting about the first four chapters. I am including chapter zero as well in this, so let's look into it. One notable change slash piece of content that was given to us in these chapters was Yuri's character. In the webtoon, she comes across as more friendly, softer, and more carefree when communicating with Bam and making her first appearance to us, the readers. Yes, she does display those traits in the anime. However, I find that in the anime, she comes across as a bit more aggressive and stern almost like a big sister yelling at her younger brother. And it's here in chapter two that it's obvious that she does have some interest within Bam, um, as, you know, she shows a more kinder, more gentler side towards him when uh, she's talking to him in her dialogue and her expressions. They all seem like she wants to be on his good side. Okay, fair enough, she kicks him in the face to start with, but, I mean, that flip, totally justified. Um, but there is a brief sentence of her saying that she did fall for him. So I do wonder if this is going to get elaborated on in the future. However, it's worth remembering the love for her in particular is forbidden. And yes, that is also brought up in these chapters. So I'm not spoiling anything for cha uh, future chapters because I haven't revealed why it's forbidden. But at the same time, I kind of like the display here, especially the carefreeness that was shown of Yuri's character you know, she's running towards where Held On is because she's heard there's an irregular and she wants to meet him. She's still a little bit disappointed by him, but at the same time, once she gets to, to a good look at Bam, she's drawn towards him. Which is something that they do kind of tease a little bit from um, Evan's kind of point of view, where he says that I don't know what it is about him, 
but that irregular seems to want uh, to have something that draws people towards it. I thought that's a good line, and it does tie in with whole um, the reason as to why Yuri is, uh, you know, taking a liking to him. So for this, the chapters, I think it does Yuri a bit more justice for her opening segment than say what the anime did to her. I like the fact she's a bit more softer, a bit more kinder. Yeah, I liked her being a bit aggressive because it shows like some more personality. But there's two slight differences that you could take one or you could just like them both. It's entirely up to you. Personally speaking, I kind of like this webtoon version because it gives us a bit more of an insight. Another thing I really did like was in chapter three, the purpose of making Evan the A rank navigator that's with Yuri seemed really smart and useful. He's able to share with us as the reader the answers to passing this test that is laid out before BAM, the whole kind of popping the, uh, the balloon type of thing with the, um, uh, the monster inside of it. His expressions of doubt and concern helps to reinforce that he did not believe BAM's chances, which is also backed up by his dialogue and why he refused to let BAM know the kind of path to achieving the test. I like the fact as well that he did also kind of state, you know what, I'm not going to let him know because I don't want to give him false hope. I would rather he die um, not knowing than dying with false hope uh, because he tried to do something that was presented to him. I like that because it shows a bit of humility to um, in Ivan's character. It shows that he does have a heart and he does have a conscience. Uh, pretty cool. Overall, I thought that this chapter did a really good job of presenting Ivan's character. But at the same time, I do also love the writing skills that were used for Evan's character because it gives off the impression that he's smart and reliable as the text that is used slash the explanation that he gives is super easy to understand and easy to follow. It's a great writing technique to help kind of explain to the viewers, so us, the readers, um, you know, just what is going on and they use our Evan's character in such a way that adds to the skill of writing, proving that the author of the series can write some good characters. I think that was great. It was a good highlight from chapter three that I really did enjoy. So from that is always a plus. The twist with the blue not popping was a great as it boosts more suspicion and speculation around Heldon's character as the past two chapters. Um, so I think that's one and two because um, I'm talking about chapter three here have hinted at something in the works surrounding Heldon's character. Plus, we also keep getting told that he doesn't like irregulars, so he's obviously going to sabotage the test, making it kind of um, more harder for Bam to pass because he doesn't want him to. And there's one amazing line that is changed from the anime, but it helped add um, to the suspicious actions and the expressions that Heldon has been giving throughout the course of these four chapters. And that is... The line that states this. The boy went up. What will you do now, miss? Who is miss? Who is this character? Well, I personally do know. And if you've watched the anime or you've read the series a bit further ahead, then obviously you would know as well who that character is. But seeing this line being different from Heldon's anime line was just brilliant. As it says that, oh wow, really? That spark in your mind that makes you ask questions and make you kind of wonder what is going on. In the anime, Heldon states that he is interested to see what's happening, what's going to happen next. So the idea of someone hiding or working with him was never thought about or hinted at in the anime at that point. But this series, this webtoon series at the moment, it hooks the readers in to the story uh, with the hint of someone watching the test and working with Heldon from the shadows. This was so brilliant, it's a great piece of storytelling and is a brilliant use of language and creativeness. I absolutely love this because yes, it's a change. I wish they kept this in the anime, but at the same time, um, I get why they didn't keep it in the anime because they wanted to kind of make the twist all that more kind of surprising. But at the same time, adding this gives you some suspense and it makes you go as a reader, oh, Something might be amiss here. What's going on? Now, these four chapters help to give us a bit more insight into the relationship of Bam and Rachel. Now, that's not an insight and it's not a relationship of love. And we can tell that from this because Bam's dialogue, when he's talking to Black March, he states that she's not the most beautifulest girl in the tower. 
And if someone says that, then they obviously don't have that kind of feelings of attraction or affection towards them. So we can rule out the fact that Bam is a helpless lover just running after Rachel. It means their relationship is a bit more stronger than that. And if you watch my anime reviews, you would know what type of relationship they have together. Um, I don't really want to spoil it now in case some of you are new to reading this and you've only read like the first five chapters. Um, but obviously you can talk to it in the comment section. Just leave out like, you know, leave a spoiler tag at the top in case you get the idea. But the fact that we know from these four chapters that Rachel is the one who found Bam and that, you know, Bam before Rachel came along was all alone in darkness until she arrived it does give us that bit of kind of knowledge and that kind of understanding as to why Bam is doing what he's doing. Rachel is a character that found him and taught him what he knows. So it's only natural that he would run after her and try and find her. He, at this point in time, Rachel is all Bam knows and all, you know, the only friend that he currently has. So if you get ditched by your friend and you're left alone again, you'll have that fear of going back into darkness. And that's not what Bam wants. He would rather face any adversary to get his light back. And I think that's a nice kind of, a bit of storytelling. It's kind of uh, a nice kind of angle for his character to come out as. Plus, I like the acknowledgement of Bam knowing that Rachel sometimes lies to him. Because this shows that he has a bit of common sense and he can tell the difference between truth and lie. Which makes Bam a little bit more smarter and more kind of less of a, uh, a dunce at times. So I do like that concept. So some more notable changes from this kind of um, webtoon series would be the kind of acknowledgement and the including of Bam's name. Bam is the 25th Bam and when I saw that in the anime written down on the piece of paper I was kind of wondering why, uh, what's the reason for that and it turns out that he was born on the 25th um, so that's pretty much what the 25th kind of means in his name. Pretty cool, but it's just a little bit of knowledge you may or may not know. Chapter 0 basically covers the awesome introduction that we get from the first episode of the anime, where they're like, uh, what do you desire? Um, and it shows lots of different pictures and shots of characters uh, to kind of tease you into what's to come in future episodes. However, they do make some changes from Chapter 0. In Chapter 0, we have the appearance of uh, the young blonde-haired female character with the pink jacket, uh, but in the anime, they don't show her at all. So I thought that was a different change, that maybe it was just a directional change from the anime. Maybe they thought this character wasn't going to be as popular, so they wanted to put the more popular characters into that opening segment. But the fact that the webtoon starts off with this character, and she's the first character that we see, I thought was pretty interesting. But honestly speaking, that's all I've got for now for these first four chapters, and I hope you've enjoyed this type of video. Um, I try not to repeat what I've said in my episode um, reviews for the anime, but if I have, I do apologise. And if you know any other way that I can improve on the way that I deliver this type of content to you, then please let me know down in the comment section below. Constructive, constructive criticism is always appreciated. However, like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button. As always, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, just on the chapters in general or on this video, whichever floats your boat. And other than that, I hope you'll have an amazing day. I'll see you next time for some more Tower of God content. And uh, yeah, Aligator, Matane, thank you for joining me. Bye bye.